All right, so in part two, we want to take all of these files and load it in and make a uh, movie file out of it, not just images. Uh, so the best way I know how to do that is with Adobe After Effects, although I'm sure there are other tools. You could always convert JPEG to AVI, JPEG to MPEG, uh, and I'm sure there will be some other free software that could do it. Uh, but for me, I'll use Adobe After Effects. Uh, so with After Effects open, I'm going to create a new composition uh, by going Composition New, and I can use the presets here. And knowing that I rendered uh, 30 frames a second, at 720 pixel height, I'm just going to use the standard HDTV 720, uh, 29.97 frames per second. There are other ones here. You can say we have uh, 1080, uh, different 720s, these are different codecs between the, or different standards between the DVC Pro and the HDTV. Uh, this one seems to work for me, so I'm going to go with this one. Uh, here I set my start time and the duration. Uh, it's not going to be 2 hours and 59 minutes. Uh, I know that it's going to be 3 seconds, so I'll type uh, 0, 3. And here, this is frames. So if I type 29, that would be the 20, 29 frames. Really, I'm, I'm just going to do 3 seconds, so 0, 0. I say OK, and I get this new composition here. And I need to bring in all of my JPEGs. To do that, I'm going to right-click in the, the project window here import multiple files. Uh, so if I go to the Rhino animation uh, and click 00, zero I want a JPEG sequence. So now I will select all of the files through 89 and say open and it should, let's see, uh, it's asking me to insert more. Um, so that did not work. Let's see, I'm gonna delete those, import file, again, click JPEG sequence, let's see if it just, if I select just the first one, um, will it bring in, yeah, it brings in, see right here, 0 through 89, it realizes that there's identically named and then uh, enumerated files, so it brings it in as an animation, uh, and here if I drag it onto the canvas, you can see that my width is not quite the same as the the standard width of uh, the HDTV setting and that's because uh, I rendered 720 pixels but whatever aspect ratio I had in the model so to do that to fix that I can change try to change the composition settings here or uh, perhaps you know stretch my animation to fill that entire screen I think if I drop this down to just 1000 by 720 which isn't a standard resolution at all. You can see now I'm custom. Uh, I'll actually fill up everything. Then here in the timeline, I can play through my animation like this, uh, which seems good. If I wanted to, I could do effects in After Effects, like fading it in by turning on uh, opacity keyframes. So here at the beginning, it'll be at zero. Take uh, 15 frames, that's half a second to fade in. So over the course of that time, it will fade to white. And let's go to the end and say that from somewhere around here will be, if I drop this down and then come right back to 100, it puts a, a keyframe marker at a 100. And I'm going to come to the end, or what I think is the end there, and drop down to zero again. So it'll fade in and fade out. Uh, I could go ahead and just live preview this, but I know it's going to look good. So I'm going to go composition. Uh, and then, let's see, add to render queue. You might see make movie. Uh, and I can export this, so I'm going to export this onto the Rhino animation. Let's just go all the way back to the desktop, make sure I got that right, yeah, here. And this is rendered from After Effects. Save. Uh, and you can see I haven't messed with any of the settings here. Uh, we're just going to export it. And it's pretty simple animation, so it gets done really, really quickly. And it gives me a chirp to know it's done. Uh, so now, let's go to the desktop. No, this is the forest scene I was working on. Rhino animation, here we go. And somewhere down here, you can see rendered from After Effects. And for some reason, this file is 200 megabytes, 189 megabytes to be precise. 
uh, which is crazy for a three second animation. Uh, anytime you send out kind of lossless or best quality settings, be this a rendering from 3D Studio Max or another piece of software, typically the comp compression on that file is really, really, really high. Or, sorry, the compression is really low, so the file size is very high. Uh, so what I want to do is use Adobe Media Encoder. I'm going to launch that with uh, my launchy command here. So with Adobe Media Com Encoder, I can take that file, and drag and drop it here, and then mess with kind of the, the presets of it. So if I wanted to take it and, and use a different setting, I have the ability to do so here. So one that I found that works well is this H264, which is a fairly new kind of file type. Uh, and then I can come in and pick all different presets of how you know this file should work. So near the bottom, if I can get all the way down there, um, I have my favorite, my YouTubes. Uh, so I'll use my YouTube HD 720p 29.97. It's important to realize that I'm using the same kind of height settings and also the same frame rate. If I wanted to go to a slower frame rate, that would be fine. I have a lot more data. I have enough for 30 frames a second. Uh, and if I do less, it's going to downsample that. But say you made an animation and you know you were making it at 25 frames a second, then you want to, and you wanted to jump up to 29 frames a second, it's going to have to interpolate frames, which may make it look worse. So for me, I'm just going to stay consistent with my 720p, 29.97 frames a second. Uh, I'm going to tell it where it's named or where it's saving to, and this is rendered from Media Encoder. And say save, uh, and then I can just tell it to start by clicking the play button. Again, here it takes just a few seconds because the animation is so short. Um, but let's see what we got out of return. So we went from a file that was 189 megs to a file that is about two. And if we check the quality of it, it looks exactly the same as before. Let's see if we can get a loop going. Here we go. Uh, it's, you know, to me, indiscernible uh, if it's any better or worse than the lossless version we saw first. Uh, so with that, I can take it and upload it to wherever I need. And if you have any questions, leave comments below or subscribe or shoot me an email at c.k.mcadams at gmail.com. Thanks.